you live vicariously through Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and whoever the fuck else the record companies and society tells you to so that you don't have to live, wake up and live your reality, which is wake up, go to work, go home alone. Go to sleep, wake up, go to work, go home alone. Go to sleep, wake up. Off day. Stay home alone. Most of you motherfuckers gave up on life years ago. I am A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation. And this is... If you do not have your Are You Serious t-shirt, nor your Big Facts podcast snapback, got crazy right there. Get your shit together, bit home. T-shirts are going for 20, except for the gray ones, they're going for 15. Big Face Podcast snapbacks are going for 25. This is the first step in joining AO Nation. Getting the shirt and the uniform doesn't mean that you're in, but it is the first step. You send me your picture, uh, initiates me going into your profile and shit like that and seeing who the fuck you is. If you don't have a uh, social media if you don't have no social media, that means that you're automatically in. Go to paypal.me forward slash are you serious 10. Make sure you put your address, color, and size all in the PayPal note. It's on the screen. Um, also, that is not the PayPal that you send donations and um, business inquiries. Like if you're paying for a promotion or... Um, Like your feedback and shit like that. That's not the PayPal you go to. That PayPal is in the description box. All right. Um, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Um, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's going on? So, so um, the only female blog I listen to is Katrina Gibbs. Conversation with me. If you're in, if you're in AO Nation, you have to go subscribe to her. This is the female version of me. This is my. Um, I'm just not gonna say that. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> I was gonna say this is my female side, but I'm just not gonna say that. But um she understands what's going on and shit like that, and she gives this shit from a perspective that I can't. You know what I'm saying? That I just I just can't. You know what I'm saying? She comes from a real, a true parent side, um and she don't you know what I'm saying, she give it to these hoes. You know what I'm saying? She really give it to these bitches, you know what I'm saying? How it's supposed to be gay. You know what I'm saying? So, I need y'all to go fuck with her um, so that y'all can be on the same page as me. I had a nigga uh, hit me in a DM and ask me what books it is that I'm reading and shit like that so that he can be on, you know, the same level. Of course, I told him the Willie Lynch theory, but if you really want to jump to where I am as far as mentally or whatever like that, um, this is for anybody. Start with 9-11, what happened to the passengers. I'll leave it there. Research that. Research that. If you believe the 9-11 uh, was done by terrorists, then I can't fuck with you. Um, foreign terrorists. Um, Carter B throws a shoe at Nicki Minaj. Carter B tries to fight Nicki Minaj. It's news because they're celebrities. This is my fucking issue. This is my issue. It's news because they're fucking celebrities. It's news that Mac Miller died from an overdose. It's news that Mac Miller died. Mm, mm, mm. This bitch threw a shoe. This hoe tried to fight another hoe and it's news. And I got to dab it on my lip like that because the fucking dogs ate my shit, dog. 
So don't even fucking try to judge me, my nigga. Look what the fuck they did. I ain't been to the store yet, dog. I'm working for y'all. Can't you fucking see? The fuck? I ain't been nowhere, dog. But, uh... Nobody give a fuck about you, dog. That, 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 that's just the... I was talking to Body the other night. I mean, that was yesterday I just talked to Body. And, uh... You know, he do that music shit, too. Uh, go to Big Body on YouTube. Go check out that. He got real nigga shit. If you fuck with Soldier Slim, real music, then you'll fuck with him. Big Body, two Gs, two Ys. Um, and, you know, that's my nigga, whatever like that. He told me yesterday that when I first told him, because I was telling him about the rap shit, whatever like that, when I told him, Dog, nobody give a fuck about you, dog. Nobody give a fuck about what type of um, situations you got going on in your life, dog. These folk don't want nothing but motherfucking productivity. These folk want results. These folk want to know, like, they, they, want, they don't give a fuck about your life unless you rapping that shit. If you can't, if they can't see you, then you ain't alive. And this is what I want you to understand. How many fights you been in? How many times was that headline news? You know what I'm saying? How many times was you fighting for the right reason? How many times was that headline news? How many of your folk then died for the wrong reason, unjustly, didn't get no justice? How many times was that fucking front page news? How many of your folks is strung out on dope? This is my issue with this. I don't give a motherfucker about no Nicki Minaj and Carter B fighting. Because they didn't fight. The biggest shit that happened in this whole situation is Carter B got elbowed and now she got a knot on the head. Which shows how frail these motherfuckers is. They can't break a nail, knock a hair weave, track off, can't get elbowed, can't get scratched. How much of that do you truly relate to? How much of that embodies your everyday life? You can't get elbowed, you can't get knocked down, you can't fall, everything pretty good, all love. Is that how your life is? Is your life pretty good, all good? Is it just uh, everything all love? When the last time somebody gave a fuck when you fell down? When the last time somebody helped you up? When the last time somebody gave a fuck when you got a scar? But this is what all the attention goes to. Which brings me to my next point. Attention. This right here, this situation, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, Mac Miller, Kaepernick and Nike... These situations will get more of your attention than your children do. Your children won't get that much attention from you the way you're trying to find out what happened, what went on, how did it start, what was the origin, who said what, what did she say back, who threw the first lick, why she was out there, how long they've been prepping for this whole situation. But your child, on the other hand, is being lost at this very moment is being lost and you're allowing your child to be lost because a lot of y'all out there have teenage children katrina katrina gibbs says that um a lot of y'all are treating your children as if they're puppies uh you're not raising them you're merely maintaining them feeding them and clothing them but you're not putting anything into their mind you're um relying on the fact that children are fast learners and uh, they're very smart in that they'll take on the persona of the person who is around them the most. Um, you'll find a... I guess that's true then what they see it. When I got my grandma name tattooed on my neck, um, she hated it. When I got my mom tattooed, my, her name tattooed on my neck, she hit the floor. It was right there. She like she hit the floor screaming. 
I ran out the house. And it's like, I guess now I understand the children are a reflection of the parent. There's no way. And you know, sometimes, you know, most times they say, um, the, uh, the preacher's daughter is the freakiest. I can feel that. I can feel that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet that you will see more preacher's daughter being freaky behind closed doors than you will find preacher's daughters being strippers. I'm, I'm willing to bet that most strippers did not have a father in the household and their mother was a nothing ass bitch. Strippers have uh, parent issues. I'm willing to bet. Strippers have parent issues. She don't like her mama. She don't like her daddy. And that could be a fucking preacher's, you know, child. But I'm willing to bet that the majority of strippers aren't preacher's fucking daughters. If you want to micromanage and take shit out of context and, and pinpoint that preacher statement, you can do that. That's fine. But what I need for you to understand is... Your parenting can't help but show, or the lack thereof, or the lack thereof. If you gave a fuck about what was going on with your child right now, then your child wouldn't be on social media. You wouldn't be surprised at what you find. On your child social media. Let's go ahead. And put. We're gonna put a. Uh, I'm gonna put another challenge in place. A lot of y'all are claiming that you have trust between your child, and that um, you don't have to go through your child's uh, uh, Facebook messages and and text messages and Instagram and shit like that. You'll claim that because you don't want to see what's truly going on, and you're just hoping. And wishing that they're doing the right thing, but you won't actually, you're not really willing to put no work in. Because if you go in that fucking phone and you see your daughter talking to a 28 year old thug nigga, you're gonna have to put some work in. Even if she says, oh, that's just my friend, and I was just, I, she can say anything, but because you're not a fucking fool, you know she lying. Because that's what you did. You had the same shit going on, but you'll be very surprised when that child come home pregnant. You'll be very fucking surprised when the child come home pregnant. So my challenge here right now is, right now, go into your child's room, take their phone, and go through that motherfucker. Top to bottom. If you care about your child, then go through that fucking phone that you pay for. Or if you don't pay for the motherfucker, that child is under your roof, go and see what the fuck going on. Go see what's going on. Because with all this goddamn detective work that I'm seeing these hoes do with this whole Carter B situation, I'm looking at titles all day, all this shit, it just blow up. TMZ, everybody. Everybody hollering about Carter B and motherfucking Nicki Minaj and everybody claiming to have more information than the next. And this isn't just, see, because understand, your favorite show, your favorite YouTube, or the person you watch the most is, once again, a reflection of who you are. So if you fuck with me, whatever like that, then you're probably a person who seeks knowledge. Someone who likes to, you know what I'm saying, really, you're unplugged from the system. You're not distracted easily. So, these bitches who will go on these other fucking YouTube channels, this is what they really do. They really go in their phone and go everywhere they can to try to find out. These motherfuckers, these are the people that follow Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. It's everyday average motherfuckers who are really bulbs and uh, barded, whatever the fuck her shit is. They're really in that fan club. 
but they have children. They have shit going around in their real life that they can give two fucks about because really, them following these bigger than life motherfuckers, which is what record companies bank on, we're gonna make you so high and so, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna scope you how we gotta scope you to where we put an unrealistic standard of beauty into their mind. Nicki Minaj can come out and say there's more than one a look of beauty. Beyonce can come out and say the same thing. There's more than one a, a beautiful. Everyone's beautiful in their own light, but you know what the fuck beautiful is. Fat ass, no stomach, big titties, clear, pretty face, long hair, pretty feet, no scars, complete skin tone, no change. You motherfuckers are living in a dream world because you don't want to wake up. Hold the fuck on. You live vicariously through Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and whoever the fuck else the record companies and society tells you to so that you don't have to live, wake up and live your reality, which is wake up, go to work, go home alone. Go to sleep, wake up, go to work, go home alone. Go to sleep, wake up, off day, stay home alone. Most of you motherfuckers gave up on life years ago. Katrina Gibbs also says about old bitches hating on young bitches. And I can understand why. A young bitch is so full of life. In her mind, the possibilities are endless. I can be this, I can be that. Niggas want me. My body doesn't seem to falter. I can eat whatever I want and I'm still fine. And the old bitch can only look at that young hoe and see herself. Like I was just like that. And when she was like that, old hoes looked down on her. And it's so many folks that will go back into history and say this hatred was built into us because this is once again part of the Willie Lynch theory, old against young. And the only reason I told y'all to go look that up is because I wanted you to know the history because as soon as I get enlightened to what was done in the past, that trick no longer works. You can't tell me that because this shit worked in the past, it's hardwired in my mind. Once you tell me, motherfuckers don't give you information for you to be now enlightened in bondage. Motherfuckers give you that information so you can be liberated. So, knowing that that hatred is hardwired in our mind, now we should say, my first mind that tells me to hate that young hoe is wrong. The same way when you were, when you came into manhood and you realized that you were no longer a boy, you put away, you know, childish things and shit like that. It was shit that you did as a, a young motherfucker that you can no longer do as an older motherfucker, like going to the club every night. Your first instinct, though, is still go to the club every night. Fuck a bitch raw. There are a lot of things, humanly, humanly, like instinctive. I'm going to fuck these hoes. Talk to body. I'm talking to body on the phone, telling him how even through my three S's, I have times of weakness. 
There are times maybe every six months where I got to just, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Man, come over here. They give me some head. Might just stroke a hole, you know what I'm saying? Just, uh -uh, I'm out of there. Do you need an Uber, bitch? Because I really feel bad about how I just, you know what I'm saying, felt weak to my body. You understand? I don't say that, yeah, well, it's hardwired in my mind. You know, he fucked us up a long time ago. That's why I'm like that. That's why I can't get right. I've never, I've never, now, the reason why, and Biden told me that I should express that. And I told him the reason why I don't want to fully express those times of weakness is because I don't want my people to use that and say, okay, well, I had a time of weakness, so I had to go back and hit the bag. I had a time of weakness, so I had to go back and pop a pill. You remember the three S's are sobriety, number one, solitude, and celibacy. Ha, 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 funny joke. Celibacy don't start with the S. We know that. It was a joke. It sounds good, but it sticks. It works. Those three things are not necessary, but they're required. If success is what you wish to obtain. They're required. And you can play around, fuck around, and, and, and twist it up any other kind of way you want to do it. But if you're not sober, solitary, and celibate. Solitary meaning be, being alone. You know what sobriety means. You know what being sober means. That means all the way. No drinking, no nothing. Weed is a drug. You're, not, you're under the influence of weed, when, like, you know what I'm saying, of THC, when you smoke. You're not normal. You're not sober. You can play however you want to play, but sobriety, solitude, being alone for long periods of time. I'm not, I'm not just talking about no 24 hours or three weeks. I'm talking about until you achieve success. Because there's some things inside of you that you need to work on. This is why you're stuck wherever the fuck you're at. I don't give a fuck how old you are. The reason why you're stuck is because you're too afraid. To let life, which is the doctor, give you your diagnosis. Life has to diagnose you as you are. But as long as you come into the waiting or, or into the doctor's office with four or five motherfuckers, your mama, your daddy, your homeboy, your cousin that you ride with every day, you're not going to be able to hear what the doctor's trying to tell you. The doctor's trying to tell you, hey, you need to get some armor. What the fuck going on here, motherfucker, man? Mama trying to talk. You need to go get you a job. Damn, what, what the fuck is it? Everybody in that hole talking. You can't hear what life is trying to tell you because there's too many motherfuckers around you. Go and let life do what it needs to do for you. And then come back to where maybe you can help these motherfuckers that you be with every day. And if they don't want to be helped, But that's what that is. The three S's. That is a requirement in order for you to get where you need to be at. And until you are willing to sacrifice those things that you so desire every day, you're going to be in that same place every fucking day. And this is why I have an issue with the whole situation, yada, yada, yada. This is why I'm trying to talk. I don't like when shit like this come up because, and, and if you want my honest opinion, I feel like these type of things are, maybe this is me being narcissistic and being arrogant, but I feel like this shit is turning up like this because I'm really getting to people, like people are hitting my, like the, the messages I get in my DM and shit like that, like the people that are speaking and, and showing change in their life. You see the subscribers growing. It's like they're trying to distract you. Because the more distracted you are, the more of a sheep you are. Meaning you'll do whatever the fuck you're told. 
and we know that communication is 95, 99% nonverbal. They're actively showing you what it is you need to do. Feed into this system and you'll feel better. Only to find out that that feeling, that euphoria, those that, that dopamine that was artificially inseminated in your brain was temporary. And because you're sick, because you're sick, You'll try any fucking thing. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj are fucking plants. Someone told Cardi B to do this. Um, I think somebody told Nicki Minaj it's gonna happen. And somebody told both of them this is gonna help y'all career. It. It creates any all publicity is good publicity, pure point blank. The people who rock with Nicki Minaj still gonna rock with her because she the queen, she acted queenly. Don't let the peasant get to you. The folks who rock with Carter B, oh that motherfucker, oh, he just she got that motherfucker turn. She ain't gonna let nobody say nothing. It's just another fucking storyline to follow. Anything to get you, anything to distract you from what is going on right here in your life. Back in the gladiator days, when the motherfucker, when the people of Rome didn't have no fucking water or no fucking, um, like th their living conditions was fucked up and shit like that, what the king of Rome would do is have a fucking gladiator fight, like just give them blood, and that seems like it's looking like it still holds true today. All that you need in front of you is. Two bad bitches fighting. Who the fuck made love and hip hop? Like, who made that? You know what I'm saying? Like, does this not seem like a scene out of love and hip hop? Like, that's what's gonna make everybody watch. Two light skinned bitches, two light skinned fire holes fighting. No matter what the fuck, both of them got plastic everything. Two attractive light skinned girls fighting. Can't be two white bitches. It has to be two African American. What? Fuck that shit. Two colored girls fighting. Because the people that we need to stay asleep are the colored people. Give them some. Give them blood. Give them blood. That's what they fiend for. Which is that's that's human. That's why UFC is so successful. Boxing. Blood sports. Fiending. Needed. But we need to give colored people a concentrated dose of blood. Routinely, I saw a meme about Colin Kaepernick. Um, it was that boy uh, Riza Aslam, whatever, like the Nick, the, the Muslim nigga who talked fast and shit. And it said, "Nike sales shoot up." And then you had like the Jewish niggas and shit like that, the Illuminati looking niggas laughing real hard. And it said, "When will they learn?" When I saw David Banner and Rizzo Islam say that we're too easily moved, I thought they were just being like high up on the horse and shit like that. But with Mac Miller dying, Young Thug going to jail, a boy getting pulled over for riding with his grandma, and another nigga get killed by a white police officer because she said she forgot where the fuck she lived only to find out that they was fucking. 
and he had another bitch up in there, maybe, allegedly. This seemed like they know that just keep us distracted, like just get us riled up and we'll just run around chaotic. Just so we'll just talk about it. Ain't shit gonna happen. Cause as soon as you get some fucked up shit to happen to us, need to get pulled over while riding with his grandma, need to get killed at his own house. Carter B and Nicki Minaj get into a fight. At Fashion Week at that. This is the slave show. Fashion Week ain't where niggas show off they new designs. Fashion Week is where... What was that shit called? What was that shit called? Tyreek and she talk about it. Well, the slave owners would take they, the finest black slave, black female slave they had and just go in that hole and like put masks on and they act like the black hoes is, you know what I'm saying, like exotic bitches and shit like that. Fuck. This is where you dress niggas up. Dress your nigga up and see who, like, wear it the best. We too easily move. Be Fast Podcast. I'm Elgin Seiko. Make sure you hit that PayPal. See y'all in a minute.